We're now going to add stairs to the interior of this house. We've already created some stairs based on the exterior. We weren't too worried about the detailing of what it actually looked like. We'll focus mostly on just getting the stair to work and represent properly in plan, as well as getting the levels correct. So if we turn on the Atrace reference, we can see what's happening with this staircase. So it's a split flight or two flights with a landing halfway. This landing sits over that store. So that store is accessed from the carport. So it works well in terms of heights because the carport is lower than the ground floor. And so this is sort of at an intermediate level. We have to therefore decide whether we're going to do the staircase with a landing and that landing is going to create the structure over the store or whether we're going to do a separate slab. In this case, because the area is actually bigger than the store or the sorry the stair itself i don't want to just use the stair landing i want to split it up and actually create the staircase with two flights so we can copy this or we can start from scratch it doesn't really matter move drag a copy the problem with using a copy of a stair is sometimes we can be limited with our ability to stretch it so let's have a look at this for instance, we want to be able to turn on balustrades, but if I select this existing stair, I don't have the ability to turn on the balustrade. If I go into the stair settings, I need to adjust these so I can make this zero to this story, and I need to make it roughly halfway. We, we can see that both flights should be about halfway. So I can go to up to next story, and so we can see that if I make that one zero, that's going to be the whole way, 2700. So if I make that 1350, or in this case, minus 1350, we can see that's exactly halfway. So the stair itself is going to be 1350 and it's stopping 1350 short of the full flight, or the full height of the step, uh, story to story. We then need to determine what size we want the stair to be. I'm going to leave it at the moment at 1050. I might end up changing that later. I can choose how many stairs I want that to be. In this case, I, I don't have many choices. I can change the ranges, but I'm fairly happy with that as well. I ha Therefore, if I'm choosing eight rises, that's going to give me a riser height of 169. So that's pretty good. It's not too high, it's not 180, 190, so it's fairly comfortable. I can also change my going relationship or length. At the moment that's 280, generally 270 is what I want to aim for for a residential stair. I could make it bigger, I could make it smaller. We can see here it just went, no, I don't want to do that. So why did it do that? Partly because the stair is already drawn. And so this is where we get some problems, where we have a problem with the ability to be able to redraw. Two seventy. All right, now it's going to stay and it's going to shorten to two seventy. If I rotate this into place, Looking at this drawing, I need to understand which way the stairs are going. The arrows here don't make it very easy to understand. This drawing also doesn't make it very easy to understand. Generally speaking, the arrow should be pointing up. Now in this case, I shouldn't be able to see both flights on this story. So this stair is okay, because I am seeing the bottom and the top on this story. It's not going to another story. In this case, however, I want to start at the ground and then go up. So I can change the way this works. So when I go to my floor plan display, I don't want to see above the current story. So I could just say none, or I could change it so I'm only seeing the top part, or I could do it as a dashed line. So there's a few different options. Like I said before, I can't even add railings. I'd have to do that separately. So what I can do, one way around this, is to select the stair, pick up the settings, and then when I'm drawing a new stair, I can now choose to add my balustrades. Now, I may not know which side. I might want balustrades on both. I might want balustrades or rails only on one side. If I'm not sure, a good trick here is just to add both of them. 
I can then decide which way around I'm doing the stair. Am I starting from the top going down, starting from the uh, bottom going up? In this case, it's going to make the most sense if I actually start from the top and go down, because I know that this is where I want the stair to end. And as I stretch that out, we can see it's in the wrong direction. I can flip that relationship, and we can see where that would live. Now, by doing this, I've drawn the stair and the rails at the same time. Now note that the rails are separate, they're unique elements, but they actually have been created at the same time, which means that they've been created to fit the staircase. Therefore, if I want to edit this staircase, which I will, because we can see it's too long, I can select them all. However, if I'm selecting them all, I might have this situation where it's selecting the rail. If I select the stair alone, let's go into the settings, and I'm gonna change this here from 270 down to 250. It's again limited what I can do, and this is based on this minimum maximum, which is very small. I, I can't remember off the top of my head what this is. I'm gonna make it 730 for now. And again, I'm being limited by what I can do. Down a little bit. If I do this again, go into the setting. Yeah, it's still limiting me, and it's based on this. So if I get rid of these for a second, we can see it's gonna make that a lot easier. I'm basically just taking away the rules. And I'll draw it again, because I've locked it out. And now I can delete that one. Uh, I don't want to grab the walls. And I'll move that into place. And then if I want to edit the rails, I can do that separately. So at the moment, the way that the rails are designed is they have this overhang, which I don't necessarily want. So I can go into the settings. This is based on the ends. And I want to change the end so it has a an extension, an overhang of zero rather than 200. Then we have the handrail. So we can see that the handrail is also doing the same thing. And so I can go through all of these settings and make changes to how all of these independent elements work. For now, we won't worry about that. And then if I decide I don't want both of these, I only want one, I can get rid of one if I choose to. For now, I'll keep them both. I'll pick up the settings of this, sorry, of the stair, and then I want to go the other way. So when I go into the setting, it's the same as before. This time I want to change this, so it's going to go to zero. But I want to start from 1350. Of course I want the same relationship and I'll draw this one from the bottom up. When I say bottom starting from 1350, draw it going up. We can see here that it's placed the handrails on the wrong side. I can flip those so I can just change the relationship here, or go mirror copy to do it that way. I've made these a bit too big. We can see that they don't quite fit. So I can select those and make them a bit smaller. It's a little bit tricky for me to see which one belongs to which one. This one here. Uh, again, flip it. And I don't need a handrail against this wall, so I can get rid of that one. So if I select both of these in 3D, I'll do that again. Right click, show selection. I only want to show the staircase. 
So here we can see what that staircase looks like. Like I was describing, I haven't drawn a landing. That was deliberate. I will add that separately. I also want to change the way that this stair looks. So if I go into the settings, go to floor plan display, on relevant story, I basically only want to show it as a hidden line. And I may choose to not show it at all. So the other way that I could do this would be to go into the settings. Change which story it sits on, which it lives on, and then change its representation. For now, we'll just leave it. And we'll add in that slab, where that slab should sit. So if I go into the slab settings, I want to start at the 1350. I want it to go down from that reference plane. We can change the thickness of this later. And I either want it to sit completely inside of this area, or more likely I want it to extend to where the stair is and cut over the top of that wall. And I can therefore use the slab as a cutting plane to be able to cut away this wall if it's too tall. Now I might not want to do that where the, the stair doesn't exist. So I might want to stop this in line with the wall. Let's select all those again. So it's being cut at the moment. If I select this, we see it actually is going over that, but it's being cut by that wall because the wall in this case has a higher priority than the slab. So we'd need to go into the settings and the building materials, or we'd need to go into the wall and actually split that wall so it doesn't extend up. So we'll go back to ground floor. I will use a section marker to cut through here. I'm just doing this temporarily, I'll do these properly later. We can see the wall that's extending through. It's got a much higher priority because it's a brick wall. So we're just going to reduce the length of this wall down here. Now we could do this for the whole wall, or we could do this for just where the staircase is. So it makes more sense that we're only doing it where the staircase exists. These walls have been created as multiple elements because I was in filling, so I need to probably do this in a couple of parts. So I'll select the wall and stretch its length down so it's sitting, in this case, underneath the wall. Now I can adjust the setting, so we can see here that the stair is designed so that the finish actually sits here, but the way that it's designed with the finish and the structure, we see that the structure is set all the way back. So we need to go in and adjust the settings for that as well. We also need to adjust the settings for this floor. The floor is currently not being cut out. So when I go to the first floor, I want to cut out, in this case I'll keep the floor aligned with the exterior face, or interior face, depending on which way you think about it, the stair face of the structure, but not the stair face of the wall lining. And I'll extend that up to cut out that hole. Have a look at that again. And we can see that that stairs now, that, um, that slab's now been removed to allow the stair to extend past. This looks a little bit wrong or strange here, and that's because we need a wall that basically hides this relationship, but we haven't gone to that level of detail yet. Let's just move this section marker across and just fix up this relationship here. And once more, we need to extend this down just so it's sitting underneath that part of the wall. 
Again, there's a problem with the representation of the structure. We need to change the way that the structure of this stair works. But again, I'm not focusing on that. I haven't even looked at whether this is a concrete stair or a timber stair. It's definitely going to be a timber frame stair because this is a suspended timber frame floor. This is a suspended timber frame floor. So this could be a timber stair or a steel stair, but it could be an open riser. It could be a closed riser. We don't really know much of the details. So at the moment, I'm just focused on representing it correctly in plan. And then we can play with and adjust the settings later on.